All right, Scott, during the break, you just said to me how you don't believe that anybody in Florida should be uninsured. So what steps would you take to fix that? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, that I've, for more than two decades, I've been an advocate to cover the uninsured. The first thing we need to do in Florida, and, and the governor will focus on that, is to fix Medicaid. Make Medicaid work for the people who are enrolled in it and the taxpayers who are funding it. Then we'll be in a position to, to expand Medicaid. The, you have to remember, we've got nearly 4 million uninsured. And even moving to 133% to the federal poverty guideline is only going to bring in 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. So we still have to solve the problems of the uninsured among the, 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 the part-time employees and, and people who are working for small businesses. And those people who are in between age 55 and 65 who aren't eligible for Medicare yet, but maybe their spouse has, has retired. Uh, and so we need, to, we need to expand, for instance, the Health Flex program to allow employers to purchase uh, coverage that their employees need uh, while not having to purchase coverage that, that perhaps is not needed for the population. And to expand our, our children's health insurance program, allow parents to, to buy into the, the kid care program mm -hmm. and, and, and allow families, in essence, to have the same health coverage uh, that their children have. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's switch into a little different topic right now. Scott, if you get elected, this district is very large. So I guess something that everybody here in Monroe County especially would like to know, how would you be able to give us the attention that we deserve down here in Monroe County? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, this, this district uh, uh, sprawls across over 8,000 square miles. Mm -hmm. It covers four counties. It's bordered by the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, Lake Okeechobee. Uh, but I think more importantly is the second largest population, the second largest county by population in the district is Monroe County. Mm -hmm. Miami-Dade County has a number of senators that are representing it. Uh, Monroe County only has one. Hendry County only has one. I think Collier may have two or three. So uh, as is demonstrated from the day I qualified on that Friday, I think June 8th, uh, I was in Key West. And, and I have been here every week since we started the campaign to, to, to learn and to understand what the needs are of the, the, the residents, the citizens, and the visitors of Monroe County so that, that I can represent the people of Monroe County. This is not about what I believe in. It's not about uh, my policies uh, that I see that are needed. It's about me being the voice and the problem solver for the people of Monroe County. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I will be here uh, just as I have demonstrated. And, and Monroe County has a, 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 a diverse uh, number of issues, whether it's, wh whether it's continuing to complete the wastewater treatment program, mm -hmm. whether it's the, what, what commercial fishermen are having to deal with when policies are made in Tallahassee and in Washington without really understanding how it impacts the, the economy. And, and the livelihood of our, our commercial fishermen in, in the Keys. Uh, healthcare, there's a, 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 we've spoken about that. There's an uninsured problem in Monroe County that must be fixed. And, and I think that, that over the course of the first four years of being in office, I think we can, we can bring about the change uh, and the support from Tallahassee to address the, the needs of people in Monroe County. Let's talk about your opponent for just a second, Dwight Bullard. What would you say are the main political differences between the two of you? Well, I, you know, my, my opponent uh, comes from a, a, a policy position of, of bigger government, of, of, of public schools, and the, 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 the position that your zip code uh, should determine whether or not your child goes to a failing or passing school. Uh, I am a strong supporter of school choice. I believe that we should empower parents mm -hmm. to, to make the decisions about what type of environment their children should learn in, mm -hmm. what type of programs they should be exposed to. And so expanding Step Up for Students, uh, school choice, charter programs, while also increasing funding to mm -hmm. our, our publicly run schools. Uh, with regards to health care, expre I've expressed my positions on that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there are a number of solutions to, to cover the un uninsured, uh, not just the one that Washington is trying to, 
uh, you know, put down on us. Uh, I think with regards to experience. I mean, I, have, I, I, I signed my first employee's paychecks when I was 16 years old. Uh, I have started small businesses, large businesses. I've managed international companies. I've served as a director of healthcare for the state of Florida. Uh, I have a, the, the diverse experience that matches the problems of the people of this district. The, 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 this district needs a problem solver with private sector experience. Uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, mean to belittle uh, my opponent's profession. I, too, was a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. I think it is, it is a noble position, and it's badly needed, and we need to pay teachers more. But the problems we have in this state and in this district go far beyond the public school classroom. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to reignite our economy. We have to create jobs. We need to get people back to work. Mm -hmm. Those are things that definitely, definitely need to be happening. Now, we were just talking about schools, and we're running out of time real quick, but I do want to ask you, what do you think of the charter school movement, Scott? I think, I think the charter school move movement has been very effective. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, we, our youngest is, has been in a charter school since the fifth grade, mm -hmm. and he's now in the tenth grade. And, and we've been very pleased with it. I think if you look at the data, uh, charter schools tend to more... Uh, fully engage parents in their child's education. They, in essence, uh, encourage the parents and the children to enter into like an education contract. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're, they're, it, it creates some healthy competition. I mm -hmm. think you've seen across the state, you've seen publicly run schools, uh, those traditional schools, uh, really step up the pace as, mm -hmm. as they see students leaving their classrooms. And it's usually those students that, that would help elevate their test scores. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's, it, it has demonstrated to be a very effective movement. You know, education is fluid. Uh, mm -hmm. It's constantly changing, just as the needs of our students change. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to explore all options and, and opportunities to, to make Florida schools, regardless of where a student studies in, number one in the country. Very, very true. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning and for Thank sharing you. all this information to our viewers. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back after these messages. Please stay with me.